This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use the Replace Objects tool in Maya. Replace Objects is super useful, but can be a bit tricky to use, so let's get into it. So what Replace Objects does is it takes your currently selected object and all the other objects you have selected and replaces those objects with that object. The easiest way to tell you how that works is to just show you, so let's take a look. So I've got a bunch of objects placed here and they've got some translation on them and some rotation on them. You can see here in the channel box, each one of these has not had their transforms frozen, which means if I zero out these numbers, they'll go pop back to zero in the world and be unrotated. And I'm just gonna undo that. And that's super important. So this tool will not work if you've frozen the transform on your objects. If you have an object that you want to replace the objects with that's frozen, that will work in some situations, but we'll get into that in a minute. So here I have these objects here, and I've got this object here that I wanna replace these with. And so this object here needs to have the correct rotation translation from zero, otherwise it won't know how to rotate and fit to those objects. So if I zero this one out, that's what it looks like. So it's gonna use the pivot point of that, and it's gonna put it to the pivot point of all of these and apply the rotation, scale, translation of these to this. Actually, let's add some scale as well, just so we can see this guy shrink down. Okay, so first select the objects that you want to replace, and then last select the object you wanna replace with, and then go into modify, replace objects option box, and then just do a reset settings. And this is pretty straightforward. So you can copy, rotate, scale, translate by default. You can say, keep the last selected object, which you probably want to do. And then you can make it a copy, an instance, or a reference. So we'll just do a copy at first. So again, select these first, followed by this, hit apply. And boom, there you go. We've taken that and replaced all those transforms with this transform. So that's super handy if you've placed a bunch of objects in the scene and you want to change those to a different object or update them or something. Now, if we wanted to make those an instance, this can be helpful as well because like that's not connected to anything. This isn't connected to anything. So same thing, select these first, followed by this, and then you can say instance. You're not going to see anything change here, so let's hit apply. But what we can do is select some verts here and you can see now those are all instances, but they still have those transforms applied to them. So that's helpful as well. And at any time you can switch whatever object here that you want. So select these, go to this one, whatever instance is fine, hit apply. Boom, now they're that object. And then that's also an instance. So that's super helpful. Now scaling won't do anything because the transform is not instance, but the verts are. So if you actually go to vert mode and you want it to scale some stuff, that will work. And if you wanted it to be from the bottom or whatever, you could just press D to enter the pivot mode and then snap that down to the bottom there to try and scale from there. So a lot of people have emailed me and they have told me that this tool doesn't work. And I've gotten a lot of questions around, yeah, I can replace it, but it replaces it and it doesn't work. It replaces it at some wonky angle or something like that. So let's talk about why that's happening. So I've just modeled a couple quads underneath here, just so we can see what's going on, because the problem is, is that people are moving the stuff and it's like moving to a different spot and it's hard to see if it's moving unless we have a point of reference. So now that we've got a point of reference there, let's just select our master object here, which is all good, right? I'm just gonna move this out of the way here. So if we zero this one out, it pops back to zero. So what people are often doing is they're either moving the object away from zero a little bit and then going to modify freeze transforms Whoops, doesn't look like we can freeze that because it's an instance. So let me just de-instance these objects first. So I'm just gonna select all of these and go to modify, convert instance to object. There we go. And so people are freezing the transform on this object even though it's been moved away from zero. So modify, freeze transforms, okay. And so see, it zeroes out here but that's not actually zero in the world. So if we actually snap that back to zero, it actually thinks it's plus 34 plus 64. And that's not right. When you zero out the object, it should be at zero. But when we zero out this object, it actually goes away from zero. And this is a really annoying feature of all 3D modeling apps. If you use something like Unreal, wherever you move the object, it's just the right transform. There's no way to kind of like get it out of sync. 
But in Maya, Max, Blender, whatever, all these programs have this annoying feature where the transform can be frozen. And I don't know why anyone ever included this. It's like pretty much a nightmare for any 3D modeler, but that's just the way all of these programs work. And once you understand the difference between frozen transform and correct transform, then modeling will make a lot more sense. So we've zeroed this out had its transform frozen and we're going to replace these with that same one and we'll see what happens i'm going to turn off instance just so we don't have to do that annoying workflow each time so hit apply and see they all shift over and that's because this has a broken transform because we froze the transform on it so at this point it's kind of messed up and i think there is maybe a way to like replace it and get it to go back but you would actually have to like move the object to like the opposite amount of what it currently is and do replace or whatever it's like pretty complex and you would have to do some math and it's pretty tricky so what i recommend is never do a replace objects on an object that doesn't go back to zero when you zero it out and in this case i'm just going to hopefully undo that command because once i've done that it's probably just like totally busted like it would be really challenging to kind of get the offset back like i think there is a way to do it but i don't recommend going down that route i would recommend just making sure that when your stuff pops over there and does the replace if it's not in the right place immediately undo that's just going to save you a lot more time and now if you wanted to fix this object there's a pretty easy way to fix this it's much harder to fix it once it's been replaced but you can fix this and then do the replace i'm just going to change the shape of this so we can see that it is in fact doing a replace. Well, my pivot's over there for some reason. Let's reset that. So here's the new model. And the problem is it says zero here, but it's not zero here. And how you fix that in Maya is you need to unfreeze the transform or bake the pivot. And understanding the difference between like this zero and like that zero is actually a really challenging concept in 3D modeling. And it can take people sometimes years to really get comfortable with that. And I've met professional artists that still don't understand the difference between like a baked pivot and an actual like world pivot or whatever. But for our object, it's pretty simple. So I'm just going to select my object and then go to modify and then go down to bake pivot and just click that. And boom, you can see here it baked the pivot. So effectively what that did is it moved it to zero, froze the transform and then moved it back to where it was. So all that happens behind the scenes. But what you get out of it is you get the correct translation value from zero, even though you'd frozen the transform. It's kind of like unfreezing the transform. So now if we zero that out, boom, it actually goes to zero. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't matter where the object is. What matters is that the rotate and translate are correct. And if you zero those out, that they would actually go back to a default state. So now that we've got that translate rebuilt, we can select all of these and then select this last and then just do an apply. And boom, there you go. See it updated with the new model. So now it's fine. Now we can do whatever. We can like change the model, make it like that, select these. Do that, apply, and it just keeps updating. And then if these were to get some other rotation, like let's say we rotated them all like that, not a problem. Let's take this model this time, do this, apply that, click it, and see it's all rotated the right way. And that's, again, because the rotation value of this can be zeroed out. And so that's the really important part. And that's the, the part that is actually kind of challenging to understand. If you're using the Unreal Engine or something like that, it's no big deal because as you move the object around, there's no way to freeze the transform. I don't know why this option is actually included in 3D modeling apps because it's not wanted. Something like Unreal actually does a much better job of it. No matter where you move the mesh, it's always applying the bake pivot command essentially. And that just makes it a lot easier. But for whatever reason in these 3D apps, you have to deal with the fact that if you've frozen the transform, you've basically given it some arbitrary value, like some random, like you've zeroed it out and it no longer knows where it is in the world. I'm not sure what you would actually want that for, but unfortunately it is there. So this is how you work around it. So one last thing here, someone was also asking me, I created this tool recently, the Snap to Center. And what that does is it just puts a object that you select to every component. So for example, let's just take this one and do the Snap to Center. And it just puts them, aligns them with whatever the face normal is of that. Scale all those down to be a bit smaller. 
And the person was asking like, oh, I'd like it to snap to center, but be an instance. And I didn't want to do that change because sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. So I thought it would be better to not have it by default, but there's an easy workaround. You can just select all of this stuff and then select that one last and then just turn the instance on and hit apply. If that's something that you want to do. And now that will be an instance so you can edit all of those in place. So, you know, that's a couple extra clicks or whatever, but uh, I think in a lot of situations, you're probably just going to want to do the regular copy rather than the instance. And this is a nice workaround if you do want to make all of those instances. And then, of course, at any time you can come in and you can replace those with a different object. So grab that one, grab that one, hit apply. Boom, and now it's a new object and all of those are an instance. So you can change that to be whatever you want. So pretty cool. I hope people understand how to use the replace objects tool a little bit better, and hopefully that will help you out with your modeling projects. Thanks very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you liked this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a pleasant day.